come to reportable transactions. Now, let me start with this. It does not matter whether or not your bank is subject to Humda. So let's just make sure everybody's clear there. I know that many of you listening today, you are a, a bank that collects and reports Humda. Okay. This is going to be easier for you than it is for the non Humda banks. Many of you listening are not subject to Humda collection reporting. Unfortunately, the exemption that they gave in 1071 to get some transactions out now requires you not only as a non-Humda bank to learn 1071, but you also now have to learn Humda even though you're not a Humda bank because what the rule did is rather than create their own individual exemption in 1071 for 1071, they borrowed from Humda and said, hey, if we have a transaction that's non-consumer purpose and it's otherwise Humda reportable, whether or not the bank is a Humda reporter or not, then you are not to collect and report that for 1071 because it meets the Humda definition, even though you're not a Humda bank. If you are a Humda bank, this hopefully makes a lot more sense to you. The idea is they didn't want double reporting. Okay, But again, it doesn't matter whether or not you're a Humda bank. If it meets the Humda definition, you cannot collect, you cannot report. Now, let me go one step further, and it's actually a step back. We had that section earlier about counting towards coverage. You can't count what would otherwise be a Humda transaction, even if you're not a Humda reporter, in your loan volume counting. You have to back those out, which means, I'll go back to, you have to know Humda, even if you're not a Humda bank, because you have to know what to exclude for counting and what to exclude for collecting and reporting. 